In 8.1e, I want you to understand how margin of error, or standard error, of a confidence interval changes as the sample size of the confidence interval. So is there a trade-off for increasing the sample size? If you think about how we compute a confidence interval, it's taking our statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of that statistic. So with respect to the means, we would do mu of x plus or minus whatever our critical value is for 95% if we chose that, times a standard deviation. Now, keep in mind, standard deviation in this case for the means is sigma over the square root of n. So the question is, what is the trade-off or what happens as the sample size increases? What happens to the margin of error? Well, be logical. Let's just think about it for a second. What if the sample size here was 25? Then the number we would be dividing by would be 5. Okay, well what if the sample size was increased to 100? Well, square root of that, we dividing by the number 10. So as you increase the sample size in this case, if we went from uh, 25 to 100, we're going to divide not by 5 but by 10. So if we divide by 5 versus dividing by 10, which is a bigger number? Well, what if standard deviation was 1? Let's keep it simple. If this was 1, we would be dividing by, we'd have the multiple of 1 fifth versus we'd have the multiple of 1 tenth. So which one is going to impact the margin of error? As you increase your sample size from 25 to 100, this will impact that margin of error calculation. Well, if you take a larger multiple versus a smaller multiple, in this case, your margin of error is going to be reduced as your sample size increases. So what we can say is it reduces the margin of error for any fixed confidence interval. And that should make sense, folks. Remember, we've always talked about as you increase your sample size, data becomes less variable. Well, if data is less variable, it means your amount of error is going to be minimized. So just remember, as you increase sample size, um, this standard deviation calculation number will go down, which will then cause this entire margin of error to go down. You're going to have less error with larger sample sizes. Last question on here. What happens if the confidence level is decreased? So what if we change the critical value, the z? Are there any drawbacks to doing this? Um, when you compute, for example, a 95% confidence interval, when you do that, it's going to impact your critical value. The critical value for that is 1.96. Okay. Now, what happens to the critical value for doing 80% confident? I will tell you, if you compute the critical value for that, it is actually going to go down. So, if the critical value is smaller for 80%, means this is smaller, it means your margin of error goes down. So the less confident you are, the lower your margin of error is going to become. And you can see that in this actual picture. When we have a 95% confidence with a higher uh, critical value or z-score, we see a nice long interval. We have the ability to have a larger margin of error. We're going to capture more of the answers. But if we lower our level of confidence, means the critical value of z we have to recompute, we would do an inverse norm on that one, and what's going to happen is that critical value is going to be lowered. So margin of error is reduced. Well, if we have a lower margin of error, it means we have less spread in our confidence interval. We are capturing uh, fewer pieces of data in there, so my margin of error has actually been reduced. Overall, keep this in mind. If you want a higher confidence level, you must have a longer interval. Um, to be more confident, you want your interval to be longer so it can capture um, almost all of the possible responses that you could get. If you want to be less confident, lower your confidence level. You're going to get a shorter interval, which means you may not capture some of these answers on the outside.